Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Burrow Tailgate Talks. I am your host, Mike Kosminski, and joining me today on this beautiful rainy day <laughs> at Penn West Edinburgh, my co-host, Mr. Alex Brown. Alex, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Mike. I'm doing uh, pretty good. Stop the crap. You're cooked, pal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say it, but I'm a little under the weather today. Apologies to the viewers if I sound a little stuffy, but we're powering through, having oh. some fun. Yes, sir. And unfortunately, we got to start the show off talking about the loss against IUP. Yeah, it, yeah. Not good. No, 40, not good. 40, 41 nothing. Yeah. And I, I believe you have some stuff written down, so you want to go over some stuff there? I do have a little stat sheet written down. Um, not much offensive production to speak of for Burrow, unfortunately. Um, like we said, it was 41 to nothing, so no points were scored. Um, Isaac Bernard had a uh, pass completion percentage of 24%, 6 of 25 on passing attempts for a grand total of 36 yards and two interceptions. So IUP's passing defense was just off the charts, apparently. Um, uh, Let's see. The two Edinburgh running backs that had any notable production were um, Anferny Williams and Karamoga Silla. Uh, Williams had nine attempts for 68 yards, uh, averaging 7.6, and still had six attempts for 34, so he's averaging five and a half. So the two running backs uh, did well. They moved the ball pretty well. We just couldn't keep drives going. Um, IUP's quarterback was brilliantly efficient, going 16 for 18. It's an 89% completion percentage for 338 yards and three touchdowns. Wow. Um, Identical stat lines for the two IUP running backs. They both had 14 attempts for 87 yards. That was uh, J.D. Younger and Dejour Stewart. Uh, Like I said, they had the same uh, amount of carries and yards, and Stewart had a rushing touchdown between the two. Uh, Receiving-wise for IUP, let's see. uh, Dwayne Brown had seven receptions for 103 yards and two touchdowns. Big, big day. Uh, Cole Laney, two receptions for 73 yards, no touchdowns, but that's some pretty big chunk plays. And then Hilton Ridley, two receptions for 70 yards and a touchdown. So a lot of offensive production for IEP, not much to speak of for Enboro, unfortunately, and it showed on the scoreboard. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. I mean, neither of us went to the game. I mean, I went home. Like, yeah, you went home, and as I said at the beginning, I was feeling a little bit under the weather and still am, so I did not go. Um but a couple of my friends went and they said it was about as about as tough on the team as the staff the stat sheet shows. So Yeah, not good. And this this Saturday they got Clarion and yeah. here's the thing though, from what I understand that they have beaten Clarion, was it what was it, the last few times or whatever? Something, yeah, a couple of years like in a row. Um, Clarion is ranked in the sixteen teams in the PSAC at ninth offensively and uh, second to last, fifteenth defensively. So this is definitely a beatable team. Um, their quarterback has only thrown for 700 yards, but he's thrown for three touchdowns and one pick, so at least his ratios are good. And then they actually have four players on the roster with over 100 rushing yards, and three of them actually have 300-plus rushing yards. That is including their quarterback. Um, so definitely a ground-and-pound kind of football team, but luckily that's that seems to be what Enboro does well defensively is stop the run. So Yeah. Hey, my dad went to Clarion. Yeah? yeah my Clarion. grandfather went to Clarion. How oh, about that? Oh, no kidding. Golden Eagles, man. Yeah, Golden Eagles, baby. Hey, hey technically we're Golden Eagle, Penn West. Oh, it's just, oh, man, I just brought the, I just brought the energy in the room. <laughs> All the way down. Boom. But, uh, yeah, just not a good week for Edinburgh, man. No, not a good so week. Hopefully, hopefully it picks up and hopefully it gets better. Yeah. Hopefully it gets better. But, uh, all right. Now to the NFL. Yep. Bucks and Steelers. Who could have predicted? The Steelers winning 20-18. Woo. Man, the Bucks could just not get anything going on offense. No. Man. And we'll get to Kenny Pickett in a second like we always do. Yeah. And uh, obviously Mitch Trubisky, too, coming off the bench, man. Like, wow. He yeah. balled out. He balled Great out. Great performance. Great yeah. performance yeah, for yeah. sure. Clutch. Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you got, uh, what do you got down on the, uh, on the game? Uh, so keys of victory for the Steelers. Uh, the Buccaneers had uh, four third down conversions on 14 third downs face. So. That's a really, really low efficiency rate, especially for a quarterback like Tom Brady, who seems to pick up third downs like Halloween candy. Um, the Bucks also had six penalties for 42 yards, which isn't crazy, but uh, definitely an undisciplined showing by the Buccaneers as a whole. 
Um, and the Steelers held the Bucks to less than four, uh, four yards per carry as a team, which is a big deal. The Bucks and Brady really, really build off of a strong run game and a play-action game. So uh, Brady uh, completed 62% of his passes for 243 and a touchdown. And that was actually the Buccaneers' only touchdown. It was an 11-yard completion of Leonard Fournette in the red zone. Uh, other notables was Godwin had six receptions for 95 yards and no touchdowns. Yeah, man. They, it just seemed like they could not get anything going. The no, Bucks, they, the they, 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 they couldn't. The no, and you saw Tom Brady, how angry he was. He was frustrated. Yeah, and I mean, to be, to be fair, he, he does have a little, I mean, he's team captain and the offensive line, you know, they didn't play well. But here's yeah. the thing. Maybe go to practice the night before instead of going to Yeah, practice. I didn't know that <laughs> until you mentioned that earlier, but apparently he didn't go to practice uh, no. the day before the game. No, I guess in his mind he's probably like, oh, I'm Tom Brady. I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't need to go to practice. We're facing the Steelers secondary. Well, how, how did that work out for you? Everyone <laughs> needs to practice. How did that work out for you? But um, you talk about the Steelers secondaries, man. Just coming to play. Yeah, missing Minka Fitzpatrick, missing TJ Watt, <laughs> missing, missing some big guys, missing Pat Fryermuth on offense. Mm-hmm. And, and not to mention their starting quarterback, Got knocked out. Yeah, with a concussion. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man, the Bucks, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, 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 it kind of seems like maybe Brady should have retired, or it's when he was retired. on top. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know. The Bucks are just off to a not that not as good as a start as we thought. They yeah, is, is a fair way to put it. I feel like, but uh, now, do you think there's a quarterback controversy in Pittsburgh? No, I don't. No, neither do I. I don't think Kenny Pickett has done anything bad to lose his job. No, me either. Now, it's not taking anything away from Mitch. I thought he played great. He did. Like, but here's the thing. The Steelers looked at Mitch with his work in Buffalo, right? Yeah. And what was he in Buffalo? Backup. A backup. So, at best, he's a backup. Yeah. So, and I think he does a better job as the backup, ready to play, when his number is called, when the when the first quarterback goes down. Yeah. And he did. He did. Yep. I, I agree. Just, I, he's just not a starter to me. I'm sorry. And okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hear it. I'm a little biased towards Kenny Pickett. He went to Pitt. But say the Steelers drafted Malik Willis, I would have said the same thing. Yeah. I would have said the same thing. And I agree. There's no quarterback controversy now. Here's the thing. I think Mitch should start this Sunday because with a concussion. I just can't yeah. see Kenny getting clear. No, if, if you're gonna pl- if you're gonna play Mitch, you might as well have Kenny inactive. Which, yeah, which I think obviously is what it's gonna. Yeah, open gonna, a roster spot for the week. Yeah, it's it is what's gonna be. And let's say we better hope, uh, or I, us Steelers fans better hope that Mitch is all right. Because if Mitch goes down, you know what that means. Mason Rudolph. Uh, <laughs> He's all imagine, imagine man. But um, yeah, man. So yeah, and hey. The Steelers, they could still have a winning record. Not saying they're going to make the playoffs. Right, yeah. But if you think about it, in a couple weeks, they'll have Mika back, Cam Sutton back, TJ Watt back. Yeah, exactly. And Kenny Pickett will be fine. So, it's... They, they, I, I think they can have a winning record. I think so, too. Not a playoff team, no. but a winning record. But guess what? There were signs shown that that could happen. Yeah. This past Sunday. And Chase Claypool, man, he balled out too. He did. You got to give credit where credit's due. I I think it was a team win. It was a team win. Everybody stepped up. And here's the thing, Kenny, he threw a touchdown too. He did. He contributed too. He did. And we're gonna say this once again, Matt Canada's got to go again. He does. Good lord. What, 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 what play was it? He he didn't run on second and four. Oh my goodness. <sighs> like oh god. How do you return? How do you return a kickoff 89 yards down to inside the Buccaneers 15 yard line? And only come out with three points. It's, I, I, I don't get it. And also, Tomlin has bad clock management. Oh, yeah. What was that this past Sunday? What, what was that? Like, literally, you should have took a knee to take it to the half. Because you know you're getting the ball to start the half. Exactly, right. Like, what, was, what was that? What was that? I knew, he had, I knew he had bad clock management, but, man. That was horrible. It was horrid. It was horrid. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, so... Hopefully, hopefully things get better for the Steelers. And heck, I hope Mitch plays well, but I just don't think he's going to be the starter anymore. I think Kenny. No, Pick- I, think I agree. Kenny Pickett is the future. Get the growing pains out now. Yeah. Have him go through the growing pains. Yep. And have him ready to go by next year. I agree. Because they should be winning next year. Yeah. 
and I would not be worried about Kenny Pickett until next year if he does poorly next year. Exactly. So whatever he does this year, it does not matter. No. It does not matter. Because, okay, granted Joe Burrow did get hurt, but, like, technically his second season he took his team to the Super Bowl. Yeah, true. Trevor Lawrence is playing better. He is. Is it his second season or is it his third? His second? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Steelers fans need to be patient. Agreed. They're not winning the Super Bowl. Get that out of your heads now. <laughs> it's not the year. It's it's just not the year, man. So hopefully things get better. And I don't know. I I I, I feel like the Steelers have a chance to win. We'll, we'll we'll get to it when we get to the rapid fire. But yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll see. Now, Kansas City and Buffalo. I believe you got some notes on it. So Crazy take it game. Take it away. Um, Allen, Josh Allen played a good game on Sunday. He went twenty-seven for forty for three twenty-nine and three touchdowns. So that's a 67.5% completion percentage. Um, Devin Singletary had probably one of his best games of the season at 17 carries for 85 yards. That's a s- even five yards per carry. Stephon Diggs continues to prove that he's him, uh, racking up 10 receptions for 148 yards and a touchdown. He's got that dog in him. He does. And <laughs> the big key, the Bills sacked Mahomes three times, and they picked him off twice. That's how you beat Mahomes. You sack him and you pick him off. That's Absolutely. the only way you beat him. And it was still close. Um, Mahomes for the Chiefs went 25 for 40, uh, 62.5% completion percentage for 338, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Clyde Edwards Alaire had a pretty bad game. He had nine attempts for 33 yards, which is 3.7 yards per carry. And then Juju Smith-Schuster had his best game as a Kansas City Chief so far at five catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. And again, just like Stephon Diggs, Travis Kelsey also continues to prove that he's him with eight receptions for 108 yards. Yeah, man, it was a good game. It was a good game. It was a good game. And to be honest, I would not be surprised if Buffalo wins the Super Bowl. Me either. Shout out to my guy Tony Romo for predicting the final score at the beginning of the game, too. That was awesome. <laughs> this that. is a 24 to 20 kind of game. What do you know? <laughs> Dude's, Dude's Houdini. He yeah, really dude, is. dude is Houdini. But uh, yeah, man, it was a good game. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Now, our boy Cooper Rush, man. My man. Good, good Lord. I'm feeling for him. Yeah, the, the legend of Cooper Rush looks like it's coming to an end. Once, it is. Once Dak comes back. But uh, yeah, Dallas and Philly, man, what do you got? Uh, the big thing for Dallas is that they found themselves down twenty to three at halftime. It was a, it was just too, it was too deep of a hole to get themselves in, considering the way they've been playing football with Cooper Rush's quarterback. He went eighteen for thirty-eight on passing attempts, that's forty-seven percent, for one eighty-one, a touchdown and three interceptions, and two of those interceptions came in nine plays in the first half. Um, Zeke had a very solid game, kind of having one of those resurgence kind of seasons, it seems like, with 13 carries for 81 yards and a touchdown. And the Cowboys' leading receiver was CeeDee Lamb with five receptions for 68 yards. So, Cowboys, you got yourselves down too early. Cooper Rush definitely was facing his biggest task yet at hand, playing a very good Dallas football team who was pressuring him, or a very good Dallas football team, a very good Eagles football team who was Pressuring him all night, and as I've been saying the past couple weeks, they were also playing against Darius Slay, who is looking like he could be the best corner in the league this year. Yeah, man, and by the way, that catch you sent me last night. Oh, the Noah Brown catch. <laughs> unbelievable. It didn't count, but it was unbelievable. Yeah, that was a that was a great catch, and if that counted, that is like up there with like the George Pickens catch. Yeah, that's, against that might be catch of the year if he if he goes down mm-hmm. in bounds. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, that would have been better than the George Pickens catch. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so, yeah, I feel bad for Cooper Rush, but sorry. It is what it is. It's football. Things happen. And once Dak comes back, I mean, I kind of figured, like, yeah, okay, Dallas is playing well with Cooper Rush, but, like, this is Dak's team pretty much. It is. So it's like, I, even if Cooper Rush played well, I'm sorry. I mean, it, it, yeah. It, it, he's... It's still Dak's team. When Dak comes back, he's going to be the quarterback. So I mean, he's what the hundred sixty million dollar man or something like that. Yeah, in Dallas. man. Yeah, and uh, so I feel bad for our our boy. Me the too. Le- the legend's over, but uh, yeah. So that's that. All right. Time for our favorite segment of the week: the rapid fire. Yep, let's for do it. Week seven. All right. Now, let's say a prayer that this Thursday night game oh. is a good one. 
even though it's the Saints and the Cardinals. Oh, is that who it is? Yep. Uh, Hopefully we finally get a good game because that last last week's Thursday night game was once horrible. again horrible. Horrible. Good Lord. Hopefully Kyler Murray at least torches the Saints defense. Now, I got a question. All right. Who is making these Thursday night games? <laughs> who? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> who is making these Thursday night games, man? Like, these are bad games. They are. They're just bad. Bad football. But but I will say, though, I did I did enjoy Carson Wentz destroying that one guy. You, you see that? Broke on Smith. <laughs> Broke on Smith, yeah. I, I kind of blanked on his name there. But uh, all right, here we go. Round five. Are you ready, sir? Yep. All right. Thursday night, the Saints and the Cardinals. The Cardinals... We can talk about this before we keep going. Just acquired Robbie Anderson from the Panthers. Yes, they did. Yep. Um, interim head coach Steve Wilkes is playing zero games. He kicked Robbie Anderson out of the game around halftime this past week. And the day later, we get the news that Robbie Anderson's been traded to the Cardinals. So he is clearing house, it seems like, uh, amid also having rumors of Christian McCaffrey being up in trade talks. Now... Is it this week or is it next week that D-Hop is back? This week. Oof. It is. So that receiving core is going to be what? D-Hop, Marquise Brown, Robbie wait, Anderson. Wait, I think he's out. Is Marquise Brown out? He, I'm pretty sure he's okay. out. Yeah. Well, when they're healthy, it's going to be D-Hop, Marquise Brown, Robbie Anderson, and Zach Ertz at tight end? I believe so, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Solid. Yes. All right. Saints and Cardinals, who you got? I feel like the cards, if, if they lose this game, I feel like Cliff Kingsbury's fired by the end of the year, genuinely. Yeah, I got I'm going to have to go with the Cardinals, too. I mean, last week, I mean, I didn't watch the game. I, I, I believe I didn't hear that good reviews of how the Cardinals played. They lost to Seattle 19-9. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, not, uh, not good. Not good. But uh, I, I do think the Cardinals are going to win this one, though. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I do. do. I do think. All right. The Browns at the Ravens. Ravens, man. The Browns look horrible. Yeah, the Browns horrible. just look bad. They looked horrible against, uh, against uh, New England. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Ravens, man. Uh, Buccaneers and Panthers. Definitely the Buccaneers, but I would yeah. not be shocked if the Panthers somehow won after the way the Bucs played. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm going to take the Bucs for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely taking the Bucs too. But, uh, all right, Falcons at the Bengals. First of all, how about them Falcons? We both called that they were going to upset the 49ers. Yes, and sir. Yes, sir. They did by two scores. Hey. Marcus Mariota show. They came out for blood after that roughing the passer. They football. did. They wanted to they win that did. game, and they won that game. So good props to them. Um, props to them. I, ju- I just said all of that. I'm, st- I'm still taking the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't go against Joe Burrow. Well, no, you can. can. You can, but, like, it's Joe Burrow, man. Yeah, no, I agree. It's Joe Burrow. But, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also going to go with the Bengals. <laughs> I'm also going to go with the Bengals. But, uh, all right, Lions at Cowboys. Dak's probably going to be back. Uh, Cowboys definitely win. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to go with the Cowboys with that with Dak being back. Yeah. It hurts my soul to go against Dan Campbell every week, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I love Dan Campbell. Me too. I really, I really enjoyed the Hard Knocks. This oh year. yeah. Yeah, and our our boy David Blau. <laughs> yeah. All right. Giants at Jaguars. Big blue baby. Roll the blue. I'm going Jaguars. Valid. I'm going Jaguars. Man. I agree. I mean. Obviously, we thought they were off to a hot start, but it's the Jaguars. Yeah. I think they're going to pull this one off. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to go with a little upset here. I'm going to go there with a little go. upset here. But obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get crap for it if I'm wrong. And chances are I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Jaguars. All right. The Colts at the Titans. Uh, if Matt Ryan throws the ball 52 times again, the Colts are probably going to win. But I'm going to go with my Titans at home. I'm going Colts. They finally had a good week. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Colts, and I'm going to go with the reason that you just said now. I think he's going to throw the ball, and I think that's what's going to win that football game. Is he's gonna Yeah. All right, Packers at Commanders. i got to go with the Packers, man. Yeah, even Packers, though, Packers are going to bounce back. Mm-hmm, even though the Packers did not look good. No, the Jets. at all. They did not look good. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, 4 o'clock games. Jets at Broncos. I am never picking the Broncos ever again. Nah. Jets. Jets. Jets, man. Zach Wilson, Sauce Gardner, Brees Hall, man. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. They are good. They're good. All right. Texans at Raiders. Raiders. I think they bounce back finally. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Raiders. Yeah. All right, uh, Seahawks at Chargers. Chargers. Yeah, Chargers. Can't. Chiefs at 49ers. Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs. Chiefs. And I don't know how this game will be. I mean, I th- it could be a good game, but like. Maybe. I-, I don't know. I don't know, man. All right, Steelers at Dolphins. Uh, with Tua back, I think the Dolphins are going to come, yeah, come me to too. win. So I, I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Me too. I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Monday Night Football, Bears at the Patriots. <laughs> After that game, that last game? Yeah, Patriots. Yeah, Patriots. Like, and plus, uh, Zappy playing well. Yeah, right he is. Now, I got a question for you because we got some time here. When Mac Jones comes back, I think you know what I'm going to ask. Is there a quarterback controversy there? We talked Maybe. about this. We talked about the Steelers. That's different. What about the Patriots? Maybe. I could s- honestly like if Zappy's winning, I could see them going with Zappy. But it's Mac Jones, man. It's Mac Jones. I just I don't know, man. There will definitely be some practice competition for sure. Yeah, that's good. You see, even if you have a quarterback controversy, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that's good because then you have a quarterback that is well. It's just obviously who's gonna be better yeah. for the team to win, obviously. So. Yeah, man, so that's going to be very interesting. All right, college football. What did we say last week about Penn State when they face a legit team? When they face a legit team, when they get to Michigan, Ohio State, (sighs) they lose. What happened on Saturday? They lost. Bad, too. I mean, they played, they played, I thought they played well the first half, but, like, again, overrated. Let me just preface it with this. Penn State's time of possession, 18 minutes and four seconds. Michigan's time of possession, uh, where is it? 41 minutes and 56 seconds. <laughs> Not even close. Penn State only totaled 268 yards to Michigan's 563 yards of offense. Uh, Sean Clifford completed just a beautiful seven of 19 passes for 120 yards. Um, he was also the leading rusher with six attempts for 74 yards. Um, the rest of his team totaled 38 rushing yards. Um, so like I said, Michigan had 563 total yards. Uh, 418 of them were on the ground, which was 74% of their offensive production yesterday, or Saturday, excuse me. Um, Blake Corum, 28 carries, 166 yards and two touchdowns, and... Uh, Donovan Edwards had 16 carries for 173 and also two touchdowns. So Michigan ran all over Penn State and controlled the ball the whole time. Seven of Penn State's 17 points were off a terrible J.J. McCarthy pick six. So what did we say? What did we say? It happens every year. And once again, if James Franklin can't coach and help his team to – win these big ones. Why does he still have a job? When was the last time when was the last time he beat Michigan or Ohio State? I wanna say Penn State is 0 and ten against top ten teams since twenty sixteen. So And they had like Barkley, McSorley, and McSorley's yep. a bust. Barkley is a is a John Dotson. Yep. Yep. And even though Pitt beat him in here. Um, <laughs> hey, they did. They, they did. did, even though uh, they lost to uh, Penn State three straight years in a row, but we're not going to get into that. We're not talking about Pitt. We're not talking nope. about Pitt. We're talking about Penn State. We're talking about Penn State. And, uh, yeah, so Ohio State had a bye week. They right? did. And when we eventually get to Penn State, Ohio State, I'm sure we'll go into more depth once we get to it. For sure. It's not going to look good. No, Ohio it's State not. Is, Ohio State is just going to crush him, I think. I really think that. Yeah, me too. And... The Penn State's just not a legit team. No. They're not a top five team. We've, we've said this all the time. They're not a top five team. But no, yet, they're not. Every year, the committee puts them in the top ten when they win their first five, when they beat uh-huh. nobodies. And what happens? They lose to Michigan. They lose to Ohio State. Heck, they'll lose to, like, I don't know, Iowa, Rutgers, a team like that. Whoever they play. I don't know. It's just, they're, not, they're not legit. I'm not saying they're horrible. No. But they're not, they're not like... They're not like Bama. They're not like Georgia. They're not like Tennessee. Clemson. Overrated as well. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get to Tennessee in a second. Trust me, we will. But, yeah, man, like, it's not legit. I just don't get it. Every year. This happens literally every year. I say this every year, and then the Penn State fans that 
are my friend that I have friends that are Penn State fans. Uh-huh. They'll go, you don't know what you're talking about. Pitt sucks. I know Pitt sucks, but like, <laughs> I mean, they lost Kenny Pickett. And, you, know, you you get it. But like, yeah, like every year, I just, I just, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. And they have a quote. I think that is his name, Drew Alai. I don't know. I'm not a Penn State fan. The backup for Penn State. Oh yeah, he threw a couple passes yesterday. I know some Penn State fans that want him in at quarterback and not Sean Clifford, but like if this is Sean Clifford's last year, they're not yeah, they're not gonna bench Clifford. Exactly. And uh, we'll see how Penn State does next year when they finally don't have Sean Clifford. Yeah. With the seventh year senior. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So all right. In my opinion, the game of the week: Alabama losing. To Tennessee. Woo! Hey, that goalpost, it's in the river. It's in the river, man. It's in the river. And, man, what a game. What a game. What do you got on that? Um, Bama was pretty good. I mean, considering, uh, you know, this is considered having Bama, holding ba- Bama to a bad game offensively, considering that's uh, 300, 300, or 455 yards and two touchdowns for Bryce Young and uh, six for 13 on third down conversion attempts. That's pretty insane, and to lose or to to manage to win, even when that's the kind of game that Alabama had, is pretty impressive. Um, Jameer Gibbs had a very good game for Alabama, rushing the ball, 24 carries, 103 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, Cameron Latu, six receptions for 90 yards and a touchdown, and Ja'Cory Brooks had six receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. Uh, play of the game, though. Will Richard missed a 50-yard field goal attempt with the game tied with 15 seconds left on the clock. Uh, Tennessee played very well offensively. Hendon Hooker had a monster game, 21 for 30, passing for 385 and five touchdowns to one interception. He also had 14 carries for 56 yards. Uh, who else? Jalen Wright had 12 attempts for 71 yards. Uh, and Jabari Small had 12 attempts for 53 yards and a touchdown. So Tennessee ran the ball very efficiently against Alabama. Uh, Ramel Keaton had a huge catch to put Tennessee in field goal range and had overall five receptions for 78 yards. Um, who was it? Uh, Jalen Hyatt had a monster record-setting game for the Tennessee organization, racking in six catches for 207 yards and five touchdowns. Absolutely monster game. And like I said, Hendon Hooker went two for two for 45 yards with 13 seconds to work with to put Chase McGrath in position to drill a 40-yard field goal after being iced to win the game for the balls. What a game. That what was, a game. I, I really enjoyed watching that game. And I knew, like, Tennessee, like, watching the game early on, they had a chance. They were playing yep. so well. And obviously you cannot count out Nick Saban or Bryce Young. Yeah. Speaking of Nick Saban, actually, also, I forgot to mention this, Alabama, 17 penalties for 130 yards. That is incredibly uncharacteristic of a Nick Saban-led football team. And honestly, that's what killed him. I mean, in a three-point game, 130 penalty yards, you can't do it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really crazy when you bring that up because you're right. That is, yeah. not, that is not a Nick Saban no football game. it is not it's not <laughs> that is pretty crazy and uh yeah man and hey all i'm gonna say all i'm gonna say <laughs> is pitt almost beat tennessee with a backup qb that can't throw yep. and he was on a bum ankle they almost beat them so i'm gonna just put it out there <laughs> i'm gonna just put it out there now i do this every year like when clemson won the national championship in 2016 Pitt won the national championship yep. in 2016. You know, Chris Blewett kicking that field goal to win it. Oh, man. Wild, wild times. But, uh, yeah, that was the uh, – that was definitely the game of the week, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, would you say that was, like, if we're, if we're counting college football, like, all the football games that went on, including NFL, college football, would you say that was the game of the week? Yeah, I would, actually. I would. It, def- it definitely was. Yeah. Game of the week, no doubt. Insanity to end the game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And – do you think Tennessee has a chance to win the national championship? I know, I know. I don't think so. I mean, you're. I know you're gonna go Ohio State because you're in Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Who's? It could be Ohio State Tennessee. It could be that. It, would be it, a cool it could matchup. be. It could be. It could be, man. Wow, a different SEC team in the Natty for once. Mm-hmm. Now, who would have thought? Now, since we say that, 
like it could be Ohio State, Tennessee. Yeah. What do you think the Final Four is going to be? I think Ohio State and Tennessee definitely. Well, Tennessee plays Georgia in a couple weeks. Ooh. So knowing the way the SEC works, no matter who loses that game, as long as it's a close margin, they'll probably both stay in the top four. Yeah, that's um, – and you can't – and, you know, yeah. Bama, there's a good chance Bama might find their way back in there somehow. It really all depends on who wins the SEC championship this year. Yeah. It's going to be huge. Yep, absolutely. And honestly, like, even though you are my friend, I, I do think Ohio State does have a chance of winning the national championship. Me they too. They just do. It's an unpopular opinion. It is what it is. Ohio State's just good. They're going to beat Penn State. They're going to win the Big Ten. It is what it is. They're a good football team. They are. They are a good football team. And, uh, yeah, so I really think Ohio State will win the national championship. I'm saying it right now. I'm saying it right now. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. All right, now, since we still got a little bit more time left, who do you think is going to be in the Super Bowl? Oh, it's tough. I hate predicting the Super Bowl in October. It's tough, but, okay. I, I say, say that. Say, I, yeah. I so, say that. Bills and Eagles. You going Bills and Eagles? Yeah. Yeah. Rowdiest Super Bowl of all time. This Super Bowl may end the world. <laughs> it it might end the world. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It, I'm. You know what? I might get crap for this. I'm gonna go with the Bills and the Vikings. Ooh! I'm I'm throwing it out there, man. I am throwing it out there. I there's a good chance the Vikings are playing well, man. They are. They're five and one. They're five and one now. It's we're going into week seven, so anything can happen. Yep. The Vikings could crash and burn and not make the playoffs. It's possible, but I think they're gonna win the Super Bowl. But I still think the Bills are gonna win the Super Bowl, though. Yeah. You're just not gonna beat Buffalo. You're not. You're not. No. And yeah, man. So. Yeah. Uh, looking at the week seven game, what do you or games I should say, what do you think is gonna be the game of the week? Looking at looking at the sheet, uh, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs and 49ers. Me too. I think I've, so. I've you know I've had I I I don't know. I thought it wasn't gonna be the game of the week. I yeah. had that feeling, but then I looked at the sheet looking at these games, like There's just no other good games really. R- really. I mean I guess, I mean, obviously, since we're Steelers fans, that's going to be an interesting game. With yeah, Tua back but it's not and, game of the week worthy, I don't think. Yeah, and most likely Mitch is going to start because there's no way, I don't think, with a concussion, Kenny's going to come no, back. No, me either. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with the Chiefs and 49ers, man. I think that definitely has a chance of being the game of the week after the way that game went last week. Yeah. Like, there's a good chance that might be. And, you know, Pat Mahomes is always fun to watch, too. He is. He really is. And Juju, Juju's really killing it right now. He is. That is also true. Yeah, if you, if you, if you give him the ball, he, he's going to be electric with it. So, he is. So, yeah. yeah, and they're a very exciting team. So, uh, all right, that's all the time we have for today. And uh, we'll see you next week.